we welcome back Tim Thompson to the A Minute to Midnight show. You were on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago, Tim, and we had so many people saying you got to get him back. So um, I was already intending to do that anyway, but that was just confirmation. So it's great to be talking to you again so soon after the last time, Tim. Well, I'm, I'm sure grateful to be back, and I really want to thank you for that. It's a, it's a great pleasure. So, uh, yes, what, what are you wanting to t- um, teach us today? Well, tonight, um, I want to put, I want to teach about having a debased mind, how that ties into the spirit of the Antichrist, how that all fits into Satanism going worldwide at such an epidemic now to where so many people are becoming Satanist and several of them don't even realize it. Um, I'd like to, first of all, start this off with um, opening up our Bibles to Second John. And uh, verse 7, it says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world who did not confess Jesus Christ coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the Antichrist. The, there's two things that can destroy the power and the workings and the authority of Lucifer and all demonic powers, and that is either the blood of Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ's name. So the how this ties in then is that to get those two things out of a person's way to where they don't realize who they are in Christ, you've got to come against the Bible and you've got to discredit the Bible. But the only way to really discredit the Bible is to literally show that Jesus Christ never really came in the flesh, and that is the spirit of the Antichrist. And so People have, when they start accepting that Jesus Christ never really died on the cross, then all of a sudden they, you don't see any longer the blood of Christ. And the Bible says that when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he pretty much made a mockery out of all principalities and authorities of, of darkness. So if you claim that Jesus Christ never died on a cross, you'll never see that he really rose from the dead and so your logic then is once again is that satan has all power and authority and then now when you start tying that all in you'll start understanding then why it says in romans 1 28 through 30 even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual morality, wickedness, malicious, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and backbiters, haters of God. And see, how this all fits in is when you start realizing that the more and more you start following the teachings of Satanism, you'll start understanding how Romans 1.28 all the way through Romans 1.30 literally is describing Satanists or people that don't even realize they're serving Satan, but it's the way that people are now following those teachings. Because, see, when you retain God in your knowledge, all of a sudden you feel a conviction when you commit sin. But if you get rid of God out of your knowledge, all suddenly now you're starting to buy into there is no God. So the spirit of the Antichrist now can start feeding you all these thoughts and concepts that are all based upon humanism to blind you. So that way you have got an open door right into hell. What about um, what about the f- sort of false religions that are? Um... I'm thinking of one like there's a book called The Course in Miracles or Course of Miracles, which is just way new age. It's a new age Jesus. And these people that believe that Jesus did exist and that he walked on the earth, um, but they have a completely twisted, distorted view of him. He's just like a prophet. Yes, that's like Gandhi. Um, Gandhi and the uh, new in the New World Order. Uh, religion that says they call themselves the wave 
or there is also another uh, occult called the uh, inner healing concepts. These are all tied into the spirit of the Antichrist, believing that Jesus was nothing more than a mere man who could perform miracles, but there was no cross, there was no word of God, and there was no faith. He was just a mere man that had a heart to do the right things. Yes, and, and so some, when, some of them believe that he did die on the cross, but the, yeah, for completely the wrong reasons, you know, like they don't believe that he rose from the dead, basically, or that it was all a yes. sham, you know. Right, and or the thing is, is that or they really believe that he is still bound in hell. And it is just incredible because when you start looking at how Satanism is growing worldwide, you'll start realizing that these people did have a knowledge of God at one time in their thinking, but now they not only hate the things of God, but God has handed them over to a debased mind. And so as they begin to walk further and further away from God, they begin to get involved in the teachings of the Antichrist. And see, the Antichrist wants everybody to come to a point. They, they believe that God is responsible for all of our problems and everybody's problems worldwide. So that way, no one will want to fellowship with God because God is a scapegoat. For the enemy and that's why when you start looking at john 10 10 a lot of these occults they automatically dismiss john 10 10 they don't even want to see it because instead of the enemy came to steal the kill, kill and destroy in the satanic bible it points out that that people should have access to free love and that Christians are actually being sexually suppressed. And then that's why so many problems are happening. But once again, these Satanists do not want to accept the fact that it is the enemy of the cross and not Jesus Christ. And so what they're doing is they're trying to find more and more ways through the spirit of the Antichrist to blame Jesus Christ for all these different things. And what's really sad, brother, is it's it's happening more and more because now more and more people are trying to communicate with spirits either through tarot cards, Ouija boards, or even mirror gazing. Mm, yeah, I, I, as you're mentioning that, see, I know in uh, like Luciferian witchcraft that they believe that Lucifer was the one that made the sacrifice, not Jesus. You know, it's a complete twisting. Correct. Yes, that is correct. And they also believe that when the Bible says that uh, Satan appears as an angel of light, they believe that the word of God has been twisted on that because they really do believe that Satan is the angel of light. Yes. Yeah. I mean, then that goes right back to the whole lie that they believe from the Garden of Eden. With the, um, you know, or I don't know what school of sort of thought you came with from that, but with um, the sort of set or set, some male Satan believing, you know, they believe, or I know a lot of one school anyway, believes that it was him that brought the black flame of life or consciousness. It wasn't, wasn't God, you know, our God. Right. And see, and here's another thing is that when they talk about the tree of knowledge, this is what's really incredible is Satanists believe that we were called to tap into spiritual entities to where we can not only talk with them, but we can have sex with him and communicate with them. But it's because of God trying to force that door closed that we've been automatically shut off from them. But people like Charles Manson from Helter Skelter, they believe because of his uh, having acid uh, trips on his drugs that he was finding new ways to open up these doors to these portals. And so now more and more people are discovering 
that maybe people who are mentally insane are actually the, who the ones that actually have got the truth in them. And, and to me, that's, that's just so demonically, severely sick, thinking that somebody that is a massive murderer who did killings is actually the one that's holding any type of truth. Yeah, well, that is a complete twisting. I remember years ago reading the the story, Charles Manson's story. It was so out there. But yeah, how he could project his voice and to come out of, I think, a sink and all kinds of things. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's also what you were saying about the sexual thing. You know, like I know that there's at least two schools of thought within that sort of Luciferian tradition. One, you know, where Lucifer had sex supposedly with Eve and Cain was born that way and the other one one of the other ones says that um, it was actually Lilith that had sex with Adam and that's how Cain was born so it's a complete twisting and and what I find disturbing is I actually see some Christians starting to tap into believing that sort of doctrine in a way that Cain you know was the product of of Lucifer or Satan having the sex with Eve uh, or or Adam, you know, with Lilith, and it's it's a distortion, I believe. You know, I don't know what you would what you believed, but uh, it, it's so sad because it's not just some anymore; it's so many Christians that the number is just astronomical. Because they just in America alone, they pointed out that more than half of the church today lives in sexual sin, because more than half of the Christians today believe that God would give us all rights to, to gratify our own sexual desires. And the reason why this is so significant is because in the Satanic Bible, that's one of the biggest things is that Satanists believe is satisfying the sexual desires is because, not because of the sexual pleasure of having sex with another human being, but because of the energy of opening up a portal, because when you have sexual sin, you're opening up a doorway to demonic entities to where during the time period when you're in these relationships, entities can have free will of speaking directly to you. And that's where you they a lot of them believe they open up the door to the tree of knowledge. Yes, and again, like so that that's fascinating because we kind of discussed this me and Brooke and Joni uh, just recently something similar along those lines, and the um and the people that are involved in whatever sort of Eastern philosophy where they are d sort of divorcing themselves from their flesh in a sense to get that divine consciousness, they are opening themselves up entirely to that demonic realm. And that's becoming so prevalent. But what's worse is it's creeping into Christianity in one way or another. What is really heartbreaking is how many well-known men and women now who have, you know, really decent paying jobs that are actually your normal day, everyday people are being arrested now for having child porn. And this all ties into what we're talking about because the sexual gratification to open up doors has not fulfilled them to where now they're actually having sex with little ones to gratify a deeper pleasure that's been planted in them through a demonic entity. And once again, it all falls back to these people are claiming to be Christians but they do not believe in the knowledge of God or in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and they do not believe that Jesus Christ actually died on a cross for their sins. You just uh, sort of off in left field a little bit here, but when you were involved in the satanic circles and the Luciferianism, did you notice, was there any um, notable tie-up with Freemasonry in that circle? Uh, yes. And see how that all ties together is, is that, remember, Freemasons, they literally know this, that Jesus himself said, do not commit any oaths, do not speak of any oaths. And yet 
Freemasons, that's what it's all based on. It's all based on an oath. And the more you get into secrets, the more and more you realize what you're actually communicating with is a dark entity. Because remember, Jesus Christ said, whatever you speak in a room, you shout it from the rooftops. And these people, what they're doing is this is the bizarre thing through Masons and through Luciferians. They're taking the, the actual word of God and they're twisting it to where they're doing the actual opposite because all of it falls back to the spirit of the Antichrist more and more. Yeah, uh, and I see it molding into a coming world religion, uh, all of these yes. facets, yeah. Right, and see, that's why the spirit of the Antichrist, what is really heartbreaking, though, is so many pastors will not pray against it, will not speak against it, because so many people do not know who they are in Jesus Christ, so they won't even dare speak a word against the spirit of the Antichrist. And actually, I've already met more than a half a dozen pastors that openly speak against the word of God because of the spirit of the Antichrist. And what they're actually way? already didn't, well, they're actually saying that Jesus Christ most likely did not die on a cross. He actually married Mary, and they actually had a family, and that Jesus never died on a cross because God is too merciful to let his own son die that way. Yeah, that's a complete distortion. So why are they even bothering to be pastors? That's what I wonder. You know, why are these people even in church? Because they basically nullify the whole gospel message when they go that right. Well, you know, there's no point. Right. Why don't they go right, and have but, another career? Or I suppose maybe that's what it is. It's their career and their way of making money. Well, that brother, but you got to remember that these men and women that are twisting the word of God are actually Satanists. And a lot of them are very powerful Satanists that have broken the first 10 commandments right away because they wanted to have a direct communion with the Antichrist himself. And so what they did, is they actually became these false teachers, and now they're more and more becoming more popular, because I'll tell you this, and this was really shocking to me. Uh, there was a person that was a prosperity teacher, and they, when these different people started to notice this, that whenever he would lay hands on people, they would start having all kinds of problems. But this person, he never openly talked about scripture at all. And yet he's a multimillionaire, prosperity teacher. But the more and more you listen to him, the more and more you'll see a lot of his teachings are actually backed by demonic spirits. Yeah, there's a lot of that. I, I, um, had on my show quite a few times, this is a while, quite a while back, Carolyn Hamlet, who is an ex-Illuminist, um, you know, from an Illuminati family and grew up with the whole whole thing. And her mother, her mother's actual role within the organisation was to infiltrate churches deliberately uh, to bring that whole Luciferianism into churches. And I mean, that was her mother's yeah. job. Right. I knew um, several witches that their job was to end up marrying into a pastor's family. And so when they would find out that a certain pastor had a son, they would really move their way into the family by marrying the son. And then they would actually transform the whole family into having false beliefs and false teachings. That's interesting. Yeah, that is very interesting. What about the whole dualism sort of thing, which is part of the occult religions, the as above, so below, as within, so without, you know, light and dark and all that, where we, I think, for, for whatever reason, a lot of these people can even be, during the daytime, a pastor or, or a priest, say a Catholic priest in the daytime, and at night they become a satanic priest. But they can justify right. that in their own minds because of the dualism and the as above, so below. So they can be both because they think it's balance. Yes, 
Right, because remember, though, these people's conscience has been seared. And when your conscience has been seared, it's the same thing as how could a person be married, have a family, and be a CEO, but yet will go to ritual parties and have sex with little tiny children. Even though that person is an actual parent to little children themselves, yeah, it's hard to fathom. Actually, it's it's hard to fathom, and there seems to be so much of it. It's obviously coming out in the news, um, which is interesting in itself. The fact that it's um, kind of being brought out into the open. I have a very good friend of mine that went to the Philippine Islands. And he went with several pastors, and one of the pastors was actually caught with an 11-year-old child. But, and he was, asked, he was saying, how could it be possible that a person could have a church, be a pastor, and yet be caught with an 11-year-old child? And I pointed out that when you start getting into the Word of God and you start realizing that these people's minds have been be, become debased, that what happens is, is that their logical thinking has now become so warped, there is no such thing as dark or light. It's now every single thing is a gray area. And, and when you get into that gray area concept, the more and more sicker you actually become in your own logical way of thinking. Sounds like Crowleyism with the... And, um, do what thou wilt as the whole of the law. There you go. That's the whole thing. Because I actually, when I spoke into a prison last time, I was amazed that I met an actual man that had a relationship with a 12 year old girl, and he was technically almost 20 years older than her. But in his mind, it was okay because of love. And the reason I'm bringing this up. Brothers, because for the simple fact is that when there is a spirit of love that is being tossed around now to where the spirit of love is part of the Antichrist, because what it is, it has nothing to do with love out of the Bible being holy and pure. No, this is a spirit of love to where it's all based on Crowley's teachings, to where it's like, hey, if it feels good, sounds good and looks good, it must be of God but they're not talking about the God of the Bible. They're talking about the God of this world. Absolutely. So how do these people generally get to the debased mind, these pastors? Do they start off there? Um, do they start off as deliberate deceivers, do you, do you think, or do they just end up there because they make compromises? A lot of them get there because of compromises, but a lot of them get there because here's the thing is, is that the word humility or being humble is a very difficult word for a lot of people. And when somebody says, if you do this and this, you're going to be, um, you're going to get more popularity. You'll make much more money. And that's the problem is so many people do not want to wait upon God to raise them up. They want to do it themselves. So it becomes a spirit of compromise. And, and that's where you get into, like, the spirit of the Antichrist. It's all done in the soul realm then, isn't it? It's not done with the spirit of God. It's kind of counterfeiting yeah. things in the soul realm. Every single thing is a counterfeit because it's all based upon, once again, if it feels good, sounds good, then it's in, and if it's logical, then go ahead and accept it. Because here, here's the thing, brother. I know people... They're actually in the ministry. When they started to walk into unforgiveness, they actually started to experience financial miracles. And I know that sounds kind of opposite, but the God of this world, when they when these people start walking in bitterness, the God of this world started to take notice of these people, and all of a sudden they started to walk in a greater financial blessing. But these people, what was really sad, though, is one of them ended up taking their life because his unforgiveness kept growing and growing, and he became more and more bitter. 
yeah, yes, that's understandable. That you know, when people go down that route, it's hard to get hard to get out of. But certainly not one that you want to go down. Where you know, the Bible says not to let the sun go down on your anger, let alone get bitter. Right. But the but the, the other side of that, I'm thinking, is that so many people view a successful ministry, um, a worldly successful ministry that has a lot of money and a lot of popularity in big churches. They see that as God's blessing, you know, our God's blessing on it. Right. But it's not That's necessarily the, the case. No. Oh, no. Because here's the thing is because my grandfather actually is the one that financially put forth the money to have the first Masonic temple be built in San Francisco, California. I was offered a job that was un unreal and I was offered more money than I could ever imagine. And then because I turned it down, I've received letters and phone calls asking me to join different Masonic lodges and these people are willing to pay me a lot of money to be along to something. And because, but here's the thing that I found so incredible. When people found out that I was a Christian author, these people said, hey, we're even willing to help you promote your books. So they do promote a little bit of Christianity because if you promote a little bit of Christianity and then all of a sudden you start showing people that you've got money, it is so sick and sad how many people think if you've got money and you're claiming to be a Christian, you must be right with God. And, of course, the other side to that coin is if they if they get you in and they start promoting you and they have the, a foothold in there, that it could be a way that they would um, be expecting a payback and some control later on because they want to get control of your ministry. That is exactly, 100% exactly. And what I found so sad is very few people, uh, and this is why I feel so blessed talking to you about this, but very few pastors and very few leaders will say ever anything about the God of this world. It's like people do not even want to mention that Satan is actually causing things to happen because they don't want to even admit it. And yet, the, in the book of Revelation, the Bible clearly states that even demons were able to perform miracles, and yet the average Christian does not even want to mention anything about demons doing anything. Well, this is the whole thing with the, um, with the book of Revelation, and Jesus talked about it in Luke 21 and Matthew 24 about the signs and wonders, and, you know, they will perform great signs and wonders, but um, they're not of God. Because Jesus said, oh, I will say, depart from me, I never knew you. And, you know, we know the Antichrist and the false prophet will perform great signs and wonders, which takes us back to that whole soul realm and where you started from right at the beginning of this discussion, I think, that, that this that is, is where correct. it's heading. Right. And, and the sad thing is, brother, is that it's not just happening in churches now. It's actually happening on radio talk shows. And to me, if you're claiming to be a Christian and, or, and you're claiming to have a ministry, it's pointless and worthless if you are do, doing anything if it's not wrapped around salvation. Because to me, our whole lives and our whole destiny as Christians is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It, it it should be absolutely. Uh, otherwise, it isn't Christianity really if it's not based around that, which is the whole right. point. With you know, you see, I'm I'm constantly, you know, flabbergasted, and I suppose in the sense that you see these people coming out as ministers, uh, you know, lesbian bishop or you know gay or or something you know promoting that lifestyle or ones that are saying well we don't actually believe necessarily in what you said about jesus dying on the cross and yet they carry on these forms of some sort of ministry it's just uh you know it's it's so warped and we see more and more of it right and one thing i i find so incredible is how many people wear this label as a Christian, 
as something that means really nothing to them deeply. All it means is just a word that they use to either make money or to promote themselves because they want to be known as something. So they so they get involved in some sort of religious concept or a Christian concept just so they can wear that label to make money. But they never really get into deep because you can just tell they are controlled by the demonic spirits that are around them that are feeding them all this information and it's all based upon the soulish realm and it's never done by the spirit of god yeah, so w when we see um well, i think we mentioned in the last show the um the satanist group that were er erecting baphomet statues i think it started off in oklahoma and it's done something of a rounds um, which, you know, that has that as above, so below um, posture, the Baphomet does, and the whole uh, kind of enlightenment and, and, you know, enlightened consciousness movement that we are seeing, how should Christians combat it? How, how do they, first of all, how do they get it straight in their own mind so that they understand this stuff? And secondly, then once they know what's really going on, how can they tell other people, you know, or what can they tell other people to to lead them away and show them that this stuff is destructive? What I try to, most of the time, and what I try to do is I when I tell people is not only study your Bible, but really discover who you are in Jesus Christ. When you start realizing, like say for instance, 1 John 4, 4 says, he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. When you start discovering really who you are in Christ, you have the power and the authority in you personally to start binding up spirits to where the Satanists and the occultists and the witches are literally do not know what to do and and they, they become paranoid because now they can no longer transfer information or communicate directly with the spirits that are helping them and so now they become lost and that's when you start ministering to them me and a very good friend of mine we went to one of those hypnosis things to where this guy was proclaiming all this stuff about hypnosis and what we did, brothers, we were binding up the spirits. And the man up on stage literally said, I do not know why, but I'm not able to connect with any of the spirits that are normally help me. And I'm sorry, but we're gonna, I'm going to have to cancel the show tonight. And that was incredible because he openly told the crowd what he was doing. But we were able to bind up these spirits where the man was not able to perform any type of any type of demonic power or authority. That's really interesting too, because it reminds me years ago when I was a new Christian, another guy I knew said that he was with some other people and they went to one of those fire walkers where the Indian guy walks on a fire on hot coals yes. and they bound the spirits and the guy burnt his feet and had to get off. And this was somebody that was doing it as a, you know, a, a part of a show. And, um, and yeah, so that's the same kind of thing. Right. Uh, years ago, and this was kind of funny, but uh, about four years ago, a gay bar opened near a school. And what I decided to do is I went into the parking lot and went to the front door of the gay bar, and I just started to – bind up all spirits to where I slowly said, and what I did is I, I anointed the door and I said, no perverted spirits shall be able to enter into this place. Well, brother, it was incredible because within six months it shut down and people, you would see people walk up to the front door of this gay bar and they would turn around and walk the other way. That's interesting. Very interesting. And all I was doing is binding up these demonic powers and that's why i tell people when you start binding up the entities you're no you're not going on a fast because so many people talk about you got to fast to go do this and you got to be on a fast to do that no you don't jesus said to bind up the strong men and that's all i'm doing and that's why 
whenever I go into a church and or I'm invited to go into a church and I hear a pastor start speaking from the spirit of the Antichrist, immediately I bind up those spirits because I send them back where they came from. I'm just reminded of Second uh, Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse 7 where it says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And you mentioned right. before, uh, you said the word they become paranoid. Well, that's, you know, the spirit of fear is a paranoia. And um, you yes. mentioned also before about the, you know, the insanity. Well, it says and of a sound mind, so that knocks that one out. And then love, because there's not a lot of true love. You also mentioned that um, it's a false kind of love when you were talking about the the child porn and the, all that sort of stuff. And then the last one of those is the, is the spirit of power, which is the difference between soul realm power and you know which like the um, practitioners of you know whatever. Um, uh, New Age and Middle Eastern, uh, so not, uh, Far Eastern arts uh, have. They have this sort of soul power where they can do these things, like Charles Manson had it, for example. Um, but we need right. the spirit of the power of God, not that soul realm power. Right, yeah, because see, when Charles Manson, when he got his family to commit those horrible murders in murder, uh, Sharon Tate, who was pregnant, he claimed that his family did it out of loving, but but the, here's the problem: is that if you are not a true believer in Jesus Christ, the love that you know is most likely a very perverted and very sick love, because it's a worldly love, it's a fleshly love, it's not a spirit love, and that's why I tell people that the biggest one of the biggest reasons why so many Christians do not walk in power is because they don't understand who they are through the love of Jesus Christ that is in them and around them. So what about Christians that are struggling themselves, you know, because everyone faces temptations and everything is all around you in terms of a temptation um, and in terms of fighting back against that or uh, overcoming, do you have any advice? Uh, yes. Uh, what I do is, is that I've been asked a lot of times about people battling uh, pornography, drug and alcohol addictions, or having an affair constantly. And I tell people that when you seriously repent of your sins, there's another step to it. And that is, is that now the Bible says there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And the Bible also says that we are ensnared by our own words. So I, what I do is I tell people, go to my website, and you'll see a page on there called Spiritual Warfare. Those are scriptures that are written out for those that are in warfare, that are battling with something. So when you get those scriptures, when you see the list of scriptures, write two or three of them out on a sticky note and put it them on your refrigerator. Put them on your mirror when you're, when you're shaving or you're brushing your teeth. You're constantly looking at those warfare scriptures. And then what you're doing is you want to continually speak them out throughout the day. And the more and more you speak the word of God out, the more you meditate on the word of God, the more all of a sudden you start realizing the word of God now is living in you. And it is very powerful. And now you start realizing you're overcoming things that you never thought you would overcome. The Bible does say, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it must be yes. a process and, and, a, and a possible transformation. It is possible for trans transformation to occur, but it's a process, that though, is isn't it? Yes, and see, and that's why when a, when a person is a, is a former Satanist or a witch, one thing I find incredible is so many of them will say one of the biggest reasons that they started to get away from the darkness and spirits around them where their power was being lessened and becoming more and more weaker is because they actually opened up the Holy Bible. And when they started to speak out the words of God in the Holy Bible, they started to notice that the spirits around them would cringe. 
And so they started realizing there is something to the actual Word of God. My own experience, actually, as a teenager um, with a demonic encounter that could have killed me, I found out that very, very quickly. And I wasn't a Christian either at that point. I was, you know, I was living a sinful life, but using the Word of God, I, I, I quickly discovered the power of it uh, back at that point, which meant it was very hard to deny the existence of the truth and the truth of the gospel. From that point on in my life, I, I couldn't really because I'd seen its power without going into the details of it. But, you know, that impacted me right back then. Yes, yes. And, and see, and, and like, here's, a, here's another good example. It's just that when people talk about, you know, that curses and they're under a curse or they're under a spell, I like to remind people that in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, uh, verse 13 through 14, it says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And I tell people, when you become a Christian, a real Christian, you're not under the law. So when you repent and you get right with God, you are now living under grace to where God has literally taken your sins and thrown them in the sea of forgetfulness to where you are no longer. He doesn't look at your past because you are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that's why it's so exciting to see those people that are the witches, the sultanists, the Satanists, the occultists or the pedophile get saved is because when they start discovering they really are a new creation, they really start walking in a whole new meaning of forgiveness. What about people that do believe that they've got it or know for a fact or even just think they may have had a curse spoken over their lives or that they've inherited a generational curse? What's your advice to them? What I do is, is that I have on my website, I have a page called Soul Ties. And what I do is, is that for uh, when I became a Christian, the very first three years I was a Christian, it was really strange. Uh, I had several people pray over me, but nothing seemed to happen. But I would fall asleep at the wheel of my vehicle. And this happened quite frequently. And all suddenly one day, I read a thing about soul ties and how demonic powers are connected to different items, uh, anywhere from furniture to clothing to jewelry. And so when I started to break away from every single thing of my past, I realized that there was dark entities that were connected to some of the jewelry that I had. And then I started to get free. And when I got free, I no longer fell asleep at the wheel of a, of a vehicle anymore. Mm, that's that's very interesting. Yeah, uh, I've spoken to quite a few other people that have had experiences with objects, and getting rid of the objects made a big difference. Uh, because yes. yeah, yeah, that's a, a key issue, I think. Right. And and but what I do is, is I, like I said, I try to really stress to people. One of the biggest things is First John three eighteen, and that is, is that there is let the love of the word of God in you, and in your. In, but the word of God is not just in just in your word; it's it's in tongue, it's in deed and truth. See, the word of God is not just words, but it's actually in deed and truth. So many people they read the Bible, but they read it like it's like it's just a normal book, like it's just an, any other the book. But I tell people, look at 1 John 3, 18 and realize that, no, the word of God is in deed and in truth to where you've got to activate it with faith. When you start believing the word of God as if it's a personal letter written to you from Jesus Christ, your whole life begins to change from that moment on. Mm. Um, yeah, you've mentioned your website. It'd probably be a good time to tell people where they can find your website. And what's on it? Uh, ExposingTheDarkness.com. And what's on my website is uh, you've got a prayer page, you've got a salvation page, but you've got a whole lot of information of learning about spiritual warfare, 
And what is spiritual warfare? And how do you come against dark entities? And how do you come against dark demonic powers? And how do you know that you can actually live in victory through the blood and through the power of Jesus Christ? That sounds good. So yes, I hope people will visit that. We are getting um, towards the end of our time, and I do want to get you to pray for our listeners again at the end. Have you got any other things that you wanted to share with um, with our listeners before we do get to the end? I just I really want to stress to everybody that a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is not something that. It's just because a pastor prayed over you or because somebody prayed. No, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is something you grow in. The more you read the Bible, the more you speak to Jesus Christ, and the more you meditate on the Word of God, the more you will find deeper and deeper into a loving relationship with Jesus Christ to where pretty soon you will start understanding that Jesus Christ is actually tangible to you to where you can actually know his presence to where you can actually know that he is closer than a dear brother to you that's good good advice so uh, it would be great if you could close us out by praying for our listeners just however you feel the holy spirit leading you to pray all right dear heavenly father i thank you so much for the listeners tonight and Heavenly Father, that some of the stuff that we discussed tonight I know is is pretty deep for some of these people. But Lord, that God, I pray to you that you would rip the blinders off of everybody's eyes that are listening. And I pray, Lord, that God, that if there's anybody that's being ensnared by demonic powers or the spirit of the Antichrist to thinking that Jesus Christ doesn't care or Jesus Christ doesn't exist, I pray, Lord, that God, that you would rip the blinders off of their heart and off their eyes and off their ears. And I pray, Lord, that God, that you would give people a heart to know you. Give them eyes to see you. Give them ears to really hear your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that your name would be highly exalted and honored and worshiped and glorified and exalted in all things. And I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you would continue to open up mighty doors for more people to come to know your heart to come to know your power, your authority, your compassion, your forgiveness, and your love. And I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that people would come to know a deeper sense of what it means to be loved by you, Lord Jesus, to where they would feel your very presence. They would feel your very breath. And I ask this in Jesus Christ's holy name, sealed in the blood and covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Amen. Uh, Well, that was great. Thank you, Tim. It was, it's been awesome to have you on the A Minute to Midnight show again. And I, I would say sometime again in the, in the not-too-distant future would be good to do it again. Well, I always feel very honored coming on your show, so I just want to thank you again. Awesome, and thank you too. Well, folks, I think that was a good message from uh, Pastor Tim in there. Well worth hearing. And you can hear all of our A Minute to Midnight shows on our website, aminutetomidnight.com, and on iTunes as well. And don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, and also to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done that. We are building a social community and a forum on our website, aminutetomidnight.com. So if you want to join in conversing and talking about various topics and a lot of different uh, areas, then be sure to check out the aminutetomidnight.com website for our new forum. It's still only partially operational at the moment, but in the next few days we should be in full swing there. So anyway, you can register on the website. And uh, don't forget that we do run this entirely by donations. We do appreciate your donations um, to keep this running and your prayers too because we've been under a lot of attack recently so your prayers will be much welcome as much as donations are welcome and I write, play and record all the music that you find on our shows and you can find some free music on our website as well so that's a minute to midnight.com. we still have a Facebook group as well if you want to join that 
Well, I think that's about it for this show. We will catch you with another episode of the A Minute to Midnight show in a few days. Until then, have a great week and God bless. This is Tony signing out. Thank you.